No matter what's happening, the Lord is always in control, man, constantly in control. Like there's so many situations that are going on and circumstances, right? And people are worrying and they're saying this and they're saying that. It doesn't matter. Nothing else matters because God is really in control. You know what? Nothing else can add to the Lord's perfection. Not your money, right? Not your job, not your spouse. Nothing can add to the perfection of God. When he's taking care of you, he's perfect. And if he's been there, what did it say? He's not only the beginning, but he's the end, which means when you're going through something, he's going through it with you. And when you come out of it, it's because he brought you out. Amen. Man, he's the beginning and the end, y'all. I hope you begin to just love him more, just praise him more and seek him more and be just be a word of, of confidence for people that are struggling and, and stressed out and don't know, you know, their right from their left up from down. Man, with God, all things are possible. We know this. You know, the word of God was given to us so that way we would know, not so that way we would wonder or be curious, but so that way we would know. I know God is my deliverer. I know that his hand is on me. I know that his hand is with my children. I know he's going to deliver me. And no matter what it looks like on this side, I know that on the other side, I got a bright future. Amen. I got a bright future. God bless. God bless every one of you. Praise the Lord. Say hello to somebody. Amen. Say hello to somebody. Hello to my sister, my mother, who snuck in. Who are watch out for my sister and mother. They're they're probably gonna try to eat all the barbacoa and asada over there. Cause you know when they come to church in the morning, they're too tired to make breakfast. They're like, uh-uh, they got it over there. We love y'all. God bless you. Yeah, that's what that was. Amen. God is good. It's good. Hey, let me just hear everybody say a loud amen. 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 You know, everybody's wondering, are we scared to gather? Are we worried to fellowship? Let's hear and everybody say amen. Amen? amen. We ain't worried about what, you know, God is in control, man. God is in control. Except for when I stub my little pinky toe late at night when it's dark. Jesus, where were you? Why didn't you tell me it was there? I thought the Holy Spirit was in me. Are you asleep too? What's going on? Oh, my goodness. Holy Spirit's like, what, 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 what happened? What happened? Chris hit his pinky toe. He's crying. He wants to know if you're still in control. We have been pressing on, going on. We never, we never shut the doors. We never stopped seeking the Lord. We kept pressing in. We know what the law is. We, the law is that God's in control. That's the law, right? That's the law. Uh, no matter what's going on, we've seen so many situations, circumstances, churches in California defeating the governor and the government like crazy. You know, the government has no control over the church. When you do see that the government has control over the church, the end has come. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? The end has definitely come. They will definitely try to tell us how to do this and how to do that, when to worship God, when not to worship God. But... Because the Lord is with us, everything's going to be okay because he's in control. You know what I mean? And let him go and get crazier. If you're a believer and if you're watching right now, if you're a believer and uh, you got a relationship with the Lord, you know, and things start getting crazy and the riots start happening even more. If the election doesn't go the way the other side wants it to go and they start being destructive, don't worry about it mijo and mija god is going to take us out of it we ain't gonna go through that you know what i mean yeah, yeah. i'm gonna be like oh my goodness look what they got. and i'm gone you know what i mean they're breaking my oh my goodness they're coming to rich and i'm gone you know what i mean i'm not gonna be here no more at all i'm out of here let them do what they're gonna do but what we should do because what i said earlier we don't worry because we know OK, but there are a lot of people who will not go because they don't what they don't know. So let's pray for those who don't know. Let's lift those up who don't know. Let's always try to be ready to be an assistance to those who don't know. Amen. And why are you all here today? You're here today to worship God. And the greatest way to worship God is that you would do what he wants you to do. And that's to know. You're in the know. You know, you ever been in, in a conversation with somebody and they say, girl, you didn't hear about that? Oh, my goodness. What are you talking about? And they say, girl, you're not in the, in the know. You need to be in the know in order to know what's going on, right? That's the difference between us and the rest of the world who doesn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They are not in the know. We are. 
We are in the know. And I thank God for that. And we're here this morning because we want to know, you know, we want to know. We want to know. I know it's not just it's difficult for me sometimes. I'm going to be honest with you. It's difficult for me sometimes because, you know, even though I know, man, because I know and because of how much I know, the attacks get heavier and heavier and more frequent. You know what I mean? They come at a constant pace and I try to keep up with it. You know what I mean? I try to keep up with it. But sometimes I just got to realize and learn that, you know what, don't even say anything. Don't even respond. Don't give them, you know, the, the, the pleasure. What is that saying they say? You know, don't give them the night or day. What is that? How do they say that? Don't, don't give them no satisfaction. Don't, don't just, don't give in to that. And sometimes because you stand for the truth, you just want to say, you know what, it's not right to, to dismember a child at nine months. That's not right. I don't care who you are or what you think. To dismember a child at nine months? You know what? The word of God says in Psalm 139, 13 through 15, it says that God, even before we were in our mother's womb, he knew us. You know what I mean? And when Jesus was put into Mary on that very moment that the Lord allowed his presence to enter into Mary and she partook of the virgin birth from that second the father acknowledged the son. He wasn't even in there longer than 30 seconds. He not, that, that is my son. It is a life in there immediately. So I choose life. I let God deal with someone else's character. You know what I mean? I'm not voting for a pastor. I'm not voting for a spiritual leader and shepherd. I'm voting for someone who is the least of two evils. You know what I mean? The least of two evils. Who is for the church being open when they're trying to shut us down. Who is for the baby who doesn't have a voice just because it's in a womb. You understand? I'm, I'm, I'm voting that direction just in case you wanted to know. Now I can't say names, but I can say policy. You know what I mean? Because we are a church. But even then, if it comes down to it, I'll say whatever the Lord wants me to say. Who cares? You understand? Who cares? What? You got what? Anyway, hope, hopefully they don't see this for a couple of weeks and I got time to hit the road, you know. <laughs> we no longer live in 910 Andrew Drive. Y'all good? Yeah. I'm just fired up this morning to see everyone here. Makes me excited. Amen. I told y'all my sister what she was going to do, didn't I tell y'all? That's why she sits in the kitchen. Her and my mom. It was sneaky, boy. <laughs> Last time my mother was here, we had just got groceries and stuff, had fruit and everything out. When my mom came, she had her purse nice and comfortable right here. When she left, she goes, mijo, can you carry my purse, out, my purse out to the car for me? I was like, why? What's in there? I opened it. Oranges and apples. I'm nombre, ma. <laughs> oh, I love my mom. Y'all have no idea. When I need something, she's always there. My sister, too. Praise the Lord. Let's get into the Word of God um, this morning. We're starting a new, a new series. It's called All Washed Up. Okay? Y'all see Brother Loopy in the tub? That's Brother Loopy. <laughs> that was, that was uh, when he had shaved his beard. But he let his beard grow because he knew I was going to use that picture one day. <laughs> All Washed Up. You know the saying in the world that when you've already hit your, your peak, in life, as an actor, you know, you're no longer popular or well-known or famous. You, they say, are all washed up. That's the way the world views you, right? When you've reached that plateau in your life and there's nothing else you're contributing. No more albums, you know, nothing. <laughs> you had a great voice way back in the day. And then they try to bring you out of retirement 30 years later and you're all old now. You can... <laughs> and we know it's not you really, you know. They're playing the record in the background and you're just moving your lips. You know, you don't sound like you're 23 no more. Stop it. Why? Because the world says they're all washed up. But today, I want to bring this topic to you from a positive perspective. In the world, when you fail, they say you're all washed up as in you're done. But in the eyes of God, even when you fail... Because of the love and mercy of God, he washes us all up. You got that? 
So my question to you this morning is, are you all washed up? And if you don't know what I mean, we'll get in God's word and we'll get to the point. If you'll turn with me to the book of John, chapter 13. Can everybody just say amen one more time real loud? Amen. amen. Glory to God. Man, it sounds like a living church. You know what I mean? Church that's alive. I've been in places where they don't even smile. They're like, <laughs> Beginning in verse 1 of John chapter 13. Now before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, that he would depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, he got up from the supper and laid aside his garments and taking a towel, he girded himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. So he came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, what I do, you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. Verse 8. And Peter said to him, never shall you wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, pay close attention here. If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, all right then. Then not only wash my feet, but wash my hands and my head and everything else too. And Jesus, I'm sure he laughed and said, Peter, Peter, calmate. Peter. He says, he who has bathed, say bathe. bathe. He who has bathed needs only to wash his feet but is already completely clean. Say completely. completely. He is completely clean, and you, Peter, are clean, but not all of you. Verse 12. So when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Oh, y'all better get ready. I got some water and a towel over here. Y'all, Who's ready? Who, where are the two Christians at? Raise your hand. Where are the two Christians at? Woo! The one with the biggest bunion goes first. The one with the biggest bunion. We'll see how big of a Christian you are. Woo! He said, verse 14, If I then, the Lord and the teacher, wash your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Verse 15, For I gave you an example that you also should do as I did to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you don't do them. Is that what he said? No. He said, you, if you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Amen? Amen. Father, bless this word this morning. And may everyone who hears your word, Lord God, be blessed. And may they do according to what they hear and not just be hearers of your word, but they would be doers of your word. We ask all these things, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, so the subtitle of today's lesson, it's All Washed Up, Part 1, but the subtitle is No Longer Unclean. Thank you, Lord. No Longer Unclean. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. When Jesus came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. And a leper came to him and bowed down before him and said, Lord, if 
you are willing, you can make me clean. And in verse 3, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately, say immediately. immediately. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one. Can you imagine? Can you imagine you bumping into Jesus and you being a leper? And we'll talk about that in a second. But you being an outcast, you can't, if you weren't born a leper, but then later became a leper and you had a wife and children, that meant you couldn't touch your wife and children ever again. And more than likely, you, the only view you'd get from them is from a distance because you weren't allowed to walk amongst the people in the city. You were a leper. Unclean is what you were. And imagine Jesus doing something for you like that, right? I mean, if I woke up in the morning with the zit that big, and I was like, oh no, it's Sunday. I got to preach today, Jesus. I'd get oil and rub it on my eye. Jesus, make it go away. Oh, make it go away. And if it went away, I'd be like, glory to God. Wait till I tell everybody when they get here. Jesus goes, no, 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 no. Don't tell nobody what I did. I said, what? Can you imagine the Lord, you're in a car accident and you flipped and rolled, your tires came off, your windshield shattered, and you almost went out the windshield, but nothing major happened to you. And you were in the car praising God, glass all over you, and the Lord whispers, don't tell nobody you saw me. You understand? Could you really not say nothing? And here's this man who couldn't, couldn't go tell nobody. Jesus says, I don't know. You're probably losing your mind right now because you've been a leper all your life. But don't go tell nobody what I did. Are you kidding me? You know what I mean? Imagine that. And it says, immediately the leprosy was cleansed. In verse 4, and Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and present the offering that Moses commanded. Say commanded. commanded. As a testimony to them leprosy was regarded as a curse it was it was one of the worst things you could have externally because it made you an outcast you know the way i felt just because i was little and had a big head and nobody picked me on their kickball team or their softball team nothing you know that feeling i was an outcast you know what i'm talking about but when it came to break dancing boy you better watch it can I get a witness in here? Anybody remember me when I was little? Yes? Amen. Amen. But leprosy was regarded as a curse. And you were an outcast. You couldn't have no part in the sanctuary. You couldn't go to the temple to worship. You weren't allowed to pray. If they heard you praying, they would smack you because they would say, You do not represent God. How dare you speak of God? Would anyone as filthy as you have a relationship with God? Would God dare, being holy as he is, allow you to enter into his presence or even call his name? How many of you, before you knew the Lord, felt like, where's God? Does he love me? Would he give me a chance? Would he allow me into his kingdom? Me, after everything I've done, after all that I put people through, after the choices that I've made that make no sense even to me now that I'm mature enough to know what I did. But before I was like, that is awesome. Now I'm like, oh my gosh, how did I do that? Why did I do that? Thank God there was a social media around then, you know, the things that I did. Can you imagine though, in this situation, the Lord tells him, don't say anything. And he commands him to just go and do something. Just go to the temple and I want you to go show yourself to the ones who used to tell you to shut up. And you weren't allowed to come near the city. And when you cried and said you wanted to worship God, they would say no because you're filthy. God would never accept you. And can you imagine his emotions having an opportunity to go to the temple? Now, all excited, running in, blowing the doors open and saying, man, check me out. And they only recognized him by his eyes because his skin had been all deformed, you remember? And his voice, I know that voice. 
You know, if I'm in a crowd of 30 or 40, and I'm talking, you guys know my voice, right? Oh, that's Chaparro. I know Chaparro. His voice sounds deep. It's not because he's, he's big guys, because he's little, and his voice has to travel real far. It sounds deep. It sounds deep. <laughs> it's deep as in low. So he suffered. Look at, with me at Numbers chapter 12, verse 10 and 12. In Numbers 12, verse 10 and 12, that's the Old Testament. And for those of you who struggle to, to turn, just go ahead and listen, because this is the lesson to be heard, kind of like a movie. You know how you could pay better attention by, by watching and listening? In verse 10 of Numbers chapter 12, it says, But when the cloud had withdrawn from over the tent, behold, Miriam was leprous as white as snow, as Aaron turned toward Miriam, behold, she was leprous. And look what her brother Aaron said. Look at verse 12. Oh, do not let her be like one who is dead, whose flesh is half eaten away when he comes from his mother's womb. This was Moses and Aaron and their sister because she was being rude and mocking her brother who was in charge and had a relationship with God. And she's saying things and, and God said, if she doesn't shut her mouth. I'm going to hit her with leprosy. I'm going to bust her up. She better be quiet. She's being disrespectful and rude. And she kept on. And man, when they turned around, she was as white as snow. Filled with leprosy. And the brothers were like, oh God, we, we don't like, like her sometimes, but no, we don't want her to have leprosy. God, not like that. She's like, Chris. Tell him no, <laughs> you know. Can you imagine my sister saying, tell him, Chris. Tell him, God, look at her. Okay, leave it for another hour, but you know, afterwards, you know. <laughs> oh, I love my sister. She knows it. And he says, Lord, she's like dead. That word dead there means she's as if she doesn't exist no more. Now we got to send her out. She can't even be my sister. I can't talk to her. She can't come and, you know, fellowship with us. Nothing. She's as dead. And in Job chapter 18, Job chapter 18 and verse 13, Job 18, verse 13, it says, His skin, the one who has leprosy, is devoured by disease. The firstborn of death devours his limbs. Leprosy was that bad and that it would eat your flesh. It was horrible. Lepers, when they were born with leprosy, by the time they were eight years old, they lost the majority of their toes and their fingers. And that's why many of the lepers didn't walk around begging no more. They hopped or they limped or they crawled around. Look at 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 7. I'm just trying to paint this picture for you of the seriousness of this disease. In 2 Kings, beginning in chapter 5, verse 7 and 14, he says, When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive? That this man is sending word to me to cure a man of his leprosy. But consider now and see how he is seeking a quarrel against me. This is a man named Naaman who is being treated bad, but he's a general. And, and he's very respected by many people. And even though he was a leper, his, his king loved him so much and said, man, you are a great mind. I don't care what you've got. I want you to work with me. And this king in the Old Testament represents Jesus, the king. Amen. And this leper here, Naaman, represents me and you. Amen. Shouldn't be allowed to do anything. Shouldn't be allowed in the city. But he was allowed to even have a position as general. Keep that in mind. Go back to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Are y'all with me still this morning? In verse 2, it says, And a leper came to him and bowed down before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. 
Think of this question. Why do you think the leper came to Jesus to ask him if he was willing? Could he make him clean? More than likely, but what is the main reason? I'll, look, I'll show you in Matthew chapter 4, right down the road, go backwards in verse 24. It says, The news about Jesus spread throughout all of Syria. And it says, And they brought to him all who were ill, though suffering with various diseases and pains, demoniacs. It says, Epilep uh, What does it say? Epileptics, paralytics, and Jesus healed them all. Verse 25, let's just give you that as a bonus. So large crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. So why do you think he came to the Lord? You think in his sickness he just knew that who Jesus was? No, he knew that Jesus could heal him, but he wanted to ask him if he was willing because he had already seen all the other people that Jesus had healed. He had just been in the back because he's unclean. He's not allowed to be in the crowd of the people who have other sicknesses and diseases that aren't as bad as his that caused him to be an outcast. So at the moment he saw Jesus by himself, he sprinted towards him because there was nobody around him to try to shame him and say, get away. You're unclean. Get away. You're unclean. And neither were the disciples around or else they would have tried to protect Jesus from him and he came to Jesus and said man if you're willing if you're willing you can make me clean he knew that Jesus could do it because of what he had seen that Jesus had done in the life of everyone else even from a distance and make no short thought about this you and I are like this little boy when we're born, we are filthy, we are dirty, but there are people in our lives that from a distance, they're seeing and looking what God has done in our life. And they're watching, even when you don't think they're watching, they're watching you. They're watching what Jesus is doing in you, what he has done in you, and what you're professing that he can always do for you because you and I know that he is always willing. Amen. And we're dirty, and our friends are looking. How are they going to know that Jesus is willing? Because of our contact with him. I've been to prison, came out, whoo, I didn't change up right away, asked my mom and sister. It took a long time. I should have right away, right, mom? Be quiet, mom, don't talk. Anyway, <laughs> I should have. I should have. My life should have changed immediately. But it took some time, but from a distance, I saw somebody who was walking with the Lord. And I said, you know, what did God do in this guy's life? What did God do in this person's life? So I came to the Lord one night when I felt like he was alone and would listen to me. He was quiet. And I was able to ask the Lord, Lord, are you willing to help even me? I mean, I'm strung out on dope. I'm strung out on everything else, on stupidity. Can you help me? And the Lord always says, no matter who you are, I am willing. Go back to Matthew in verse 3 and 4, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately, when? Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and present the offering that Moses commanded as the testimony to them. The first thing Jesus wanted from this leper, he didn't want no money. He didn't want nothing. What did he want from him? obedience he wanted him to do exactly what Jesus said don't go tell nobody number one listen to what I just said don't go tell nobody number two now go show yourself to the priest and do everything they tell you to do that Moses said needed to be done for people who had leprosy go do it go and the man takes off running and goes and does exactly what the Lord said in Leviticus 14 I'll read a couple of things to you just so you get an idea what were the things Jesus commanded him to do as a leper in verse 1 
The Lord spoke to Moses saying, this shall be the law of the leper in the day of the cleansing. Now he shall be brought to the priest and the priest shall go out to the outside of the camp. Thus the priest shall look. And if the infection of leprosy has been healed in the leper, then the priest shall give orders to take two live clean birds and a cedar wood and scarlet string and hyssop for the one who is to be cleansed. The priest shall also give orders to slay a bird in an earthenware vessel over running water. As for the live bird, he shall take it together with the cedar wood and the scarlet string and the hyssop and shall dip them and the live bird in the blood of the other bird that was slain over the running water. Then shall, then shall, uh, he shall then sprinkle seven times the one who is to be cleansed from the leprosy and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the live bird go free over the open field. You see all these things? Like he, he was, if you're truly cleansed, you still had to wait outside and send somebody in. Chicho! Paco! Hey! Beto! Come here! Is that you, Felipe? Felipe! What happened to you? Hey, go call the priest for me, hey! Go tell him I need to talk to him! And the priest, like he couldn't go in yet. Right? So the priest would come out to him and say, Are you, are you the one with leprosy at a distance? Yes. Okay. Let me see. Turn around, take your clothes off, check him out. Like, you know how I said Dr. Shadri does you right for everything? Right? <laughs> You have a cold or a fever, Dr. Shadri? All right, pull your pants down, Mr. Rodriguez. What? I got a fever, bro. And the priest will examine him and check him and test him. And then he would say, okay, this is what we're going to do. You get a bird. You do this. You get the blood. You get the water. You see all he's got to go through just to be accepted as cleansed? And that's just a couple of verses. There's another chapter on this. Tons of things they had to do just to make sure that in the public eye, they were cleansed. Go back to Matthew chapter 8, verse 4. Matthew chapter 8, verse 4. This is good stuff because... It allows us to see the nature of our relationship with God and even more so his relationship to us. In verse 4, it says, And Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and present the offering that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Right? So as a testimony to the priest that you really are cleansed by God to prove them right, that God has cleansed you, do everything they tell you to do that Moses commanded. You got it? Go and do that. So that guy was excited. He didn't care. All he wanted to do was get back in and go to the temple and worship God. He was going to be so excited he'd get a job. He'll pay more taxes because he's a free man now. You know, the way you were when the Lord forgave you, you felt like people you did wrong. You just, next time you saw him, you just want to say, hey, listen, you remember in the third grade when I tripped you on the playground? You know, you got born again. You're 40 years old. I'm so sorry telling her. She's like, girl, that was in the third grade. Are you crazy? You lost your mind. I was like that. I was telling people from a long time. Man, listen, in the sixth grade, remember when I sucker punched you? I'm, man, the Lord changed my life. I am so sorry, man. I did that because I was little and I was afraid you're going to hit me, man. I'm just really. <laughs> Forgive me. And he went and did as Jesus commanded him. Pay attention because this closing part is my main point. The first condition and sign of being touched, generally being touched by the Lord Jesus Christ and becoming a genuinely true disciple of Jesus is obedience. That's the first sign. Will you do, if you truly said when you were saying... <laughs> Oh God, I'm so sorry. I was partying so much last night, but I need you to help me change my life. You know, I want you to change me, change my life. I belong to you, Lord. And then the next day, are you going to be obedient to what you know the Lord wants you to? Most of the time, no, because people don't what? No yet. That's why they need to come to learn the word so they can what? Know what the commands are, right? And so, Obedience is the first sign and condition. Now go back to John chapter 13, verse 5. Let's get into the good stuff. John chapter 13 at verse 5 again. 
It says, Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. So he came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, What I do now you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. And Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Peter, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then wash uh, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And he went on and on in verse 10. And Jesus said to him, he who has bathed, say bathed, needs only, say only, to wash his feet. Why? Because he is completely clean. And Jesus looks up at Peter in the eyes and says, Peter, you're clean. But not all of you. Judas was there, wasn't he? Judas was about to betray him, it said. And Jesus knew that. And Jesus tells the other 11 disciples, y'all are clean. But not all of you. And they're all looking around like, oh my goodness. Which one? Which one of us? Is it you? Is it you? What did you do, bro? What did you do? If it's you, I don't want to stand next to you. You're like a leper. You know what I mean? Because Jesus is going to strike. Something's going down. Which one? And Jesus says in verse 11, For Jesus knew the one who was betraying him. For this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. He didn't say that, and it doesn't say that the reason he said that you know, not all of you are. He didn't say that because he was talking about the disciples that they were going to make mistakes as humans. No, he said that there was someone there who was never going to be obedient, who was never going to love him, never going to be with him. And even knowing that Peter was going to deny him three times and all the disciples when they arrested Jesus were going to run like crazy because they didn't want to die either. He knew that they were going to run off for a little while like many of us do because we're not perfect, right? You backslide, you make mistakes because you're not perfect. But the Lord knew that you you are clean. You're completely clean. But the problem is you don't remember that even though you're completely clean, there are times in your life you must still wash your feet. And Judas would never have another opportunity to wash his feet. So when Jesus washed his feet, it wasn't because Jesus was making him clean. Jesus was washing his feet in the attempt even at Peter and Judas's last hour to be able to have a decision to say, I refuse to allow the devil to make me turn Jesus in. So Jesus washed his feet too. And looking Judas straight in the eyes, giving him an opportunity to say, Lord, forgive me for what I'm about to do right now. Oh my God. He could have thrown up and been sick in his stomach knowing what he was going to do. He could have repented. But even before he was born, the Bible teaches us in the Old Testament that Judas was going to be born and he was never going to want to come to God. Let me just make it known to everybody who's going to watch this in the future. God already knows if you really want him or if you don't. That's why when it seems like you're walking away, why does it always seem that people who walk away from God, it looks like they never come back because they're not completely clean. But it always seems when you struggle in your life that all of a sudden you make a comeback or a rebound, even stronger. You know what I mean? That's my mom. She'll tell you. See, now's a good opportunity. I'll let you talk. You can tell everybody the good news. But don't tell them the bad stuff, mom. She's seen me down and she's seen me up. If there's anyone else who's seen me down and up is my wife, even more so than my mom has. Okay? And Jesus told the other 11 disciples, y'all are completely clean. But not all of you. When God says you're not completely clean, you're not completely clean. But when God says you're completely clean, you, 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 that's like the leper who got healed. Man, that's overwhelming. He's telling you that you never have to worry again. I got you from now until I come back. You understand what I'm saying? Because you will never betray me. You'll make your mistakes, but in your heart, you know you love me. But you're in a, a human body, you're in the flesh, and you're going to be weak at times. But because you know me, you will come out of that. I'm praying for you to come out of that in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. May 
amazing what's going on here. In 6 and 10, what we just read right now, imagine. Jesus says, notice that Peter is completely clean. He didn't say, you're partly clean. And after I go, you're going to get clean again. This is the process. Jesus didn't say, you're clean. And now go and show yourself to somebody. And every now and then on the third or the, or the 15th of the month, you need to go do this, go do that. Jesus said, you are clean. But let's go look at something. Jesus tells Peter that because he is already completely clean, all Peter has to do is what? Wash his feet. Isn't that what he said in 1310? All you got to do is wash your feet. Here's the point. For those who don't believe that once saved, always saved. I'll tell you this right now. If you truly are saved, you're truly saved. Because you will be obedient to God. You will love the things of God. You won't do it perfectly because you can't even be a perfect husband or a perfect child or a perfect wife. No one's perfect. But if you are completely clean, it's because when a person believes in Jesus as his Savior, God removes the guilt of your sin from you, from your past, your present, and your future. Your guilt won't be so heavy that it leads you to do what Judas did. When Judas turned Jesus in, he felt so guilty after the fact. They gave him the money. And what did he go do? He went to hang himself. But Peter, when Peter denied Jesus three times, he felt horrible and guilty. But shortly after, he came back, didn't he? His guilt didn't lead him too far to where he felt like he was so dirty, so filthy that even God couldn't cleanse him. Because he remembered that Jesus had already told him, Peter, you are completely clean. And I guarantee you that when Peter denied Jesus, that kept running through his head. Am I or am I not? Am I or am I not? Am I or am I not? How many of you in your walk with God? You make a mistake and you wonder, am I right with God? Does he love me? Am I in his hands? Am I not in his hands? Is he with me? Does he hear my prayer? Does he not hear my prayer? Is he going to come through? Is he not going to come through? How many of you have been there like Peter? But because you know God, you know that everything is going to be all right in the end. Amen? Amen? And you go about your business like Peter did. Just go about your business. He went back to fishing, went back to doing what he was doing, and Playing in his mind all day, every day, I guarantee you, he was thinking, I know he told me I'm completely clean. I'm trying to figure it out. What does that mean? I'm completely clean. Because in the Jewish custom, to be completely clean was to be accepted by God. And he knew that because for a leper to be completely clean meant that he was accepted by God. But because we're not, we're not Jews, we're Americans who know the word of God. So we don't understand when it says completely clean. That's why Americans who say, oh, you could lose your salvation. They don't know what completely clean means. It means completely, forever, utterly, without a shadow of doubt. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They don't know that. Mm -hmm. But I'm preaching today because I want you to know what I know. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Hmm, God. It's harder for you to know if God is going to come through when you don't know that God has already come through and how much He's come through. If you're not sure if you're His or not His, if you're always, you know, one leg and then the other leg, He loves me, He loves me not. Oh my goodness, He loves me, He loves me not. Oh my God, He loves me, He loves me not. You understand? You can't live that way. You can't. You can't live that way. You've got to know your relationship with God. You just got to know. So when the trouble comes, the time of trouble comes, the testing comes, when they're trying to give you what you don't want, when the government's trying to shut you down, when they're trying to make you take the mark, if you know the God that you say you know, you know that it's going to be all right no matter what decision you make. You got what I'm saying? In Romans chapter 5 verse 1, and excuse me for the excitement and for the disconnection there. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we are completely clean, we have peace with God forever. It's over. 
The only thing that's got to happen now is I got to learn to grow in God and, and understand what he wants for me to do more and more and more and more. When you don't learn God's word, you're not going to do what God wants you to do. You understand? That's what the word of God is for. That's what training at your job is for. So you can know what and what not to do. So people who want to know and what not to do, because you're excited that you've been cleansed like the leper, you'll do exactly what he said. What do you want me to do? You want me to stop doing that? Absolutely. Jesus has cleansed all of us who believe in him genuinely. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. We know this one by heart. For there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That means that you are not going to be kept out of heaven because you make mistakes. You'll be kept out of heaven if you don't obey and love the Son. Do you love the Son? Do you make mistakes? Then it's going to be all right in the end. Because you don't get yourself there. He carries you through. Amen. He's going to carry you through all the way. But you got to know that he is. Because if you don't know that he is, you lose confidence. You lose power. You lose strength. You lose that forward motion of God's calling on your life and a purpose. And you're always thinking, well, only Pastor Chris can, you know, has a testimony. And no, you do too. You've been dirty just like I'm dirty. We all were born dirty. None of us is perfect and better than the other person. We all have our issues that God has cleansed us from. This is what Jesus meant by completely clean or completely bathed like he told Peter. Needed to wash the feet only is when a saved person sins which hinders our fellowship with God. The truth of the matter is, is that when you do fall short of your relationship with God and you make the, the mistakes by sinning and doing what displeases God, you never get kicked out of God's presence, but you do have an issue between you and God and you know it just doesn't feel right. Something's not right. Well, you know what you're doing. God is not happy and pleased with it, right? And you'll feel it if you truly have the Holy Ghost. You'll feel it. But because you're completely clean, all you got to do is wash your feet. No question if you're completely clean. If you're feeling guilty for what you did, then you're different than everybody else in the world who doesn't got a relationship with God. Because they could care less if God sees them doing what they're doing every day and every night, all day during the week and on the weekends. They can care less. It's hard for me. It's impossible for me to walk into a sports bar and order, even if I'm in another country, and say, you know what? Uh, let me have a whole bottle of tequila. Nobody looking, right? Nobody got me live on Facebook. Let me have a whole bottle, bro. It's hard. Why? Because God is in me. He's always with me, watching all the time. Now, don't, don't think that I'm teaching and preaching about drinking. Can you drink or not? We'll talk about that later. This has nothing to do with it. I'm just saying. Okay? That's why I use the, the analogy of a whole bottle. Now, if I went up there and said a shot, it's a different story. Different story. <laughs> Needing to wash the feet only is when a saved person sins, which hinders your fellowship with God. Look at Matthew chapter 6, and let me give you an example of that. And we're almost close. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. In verse 12, it says, And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. In verse 14 and 15. For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. One Another sign that you are completely clean is that you don't hold grudges against people. Another sign that you're completely clean is that you forgive those who have hurt you and harmed you. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's a sign. Because it said here, if you don't forgive others, God will not forgive you. And so you, the reason, if your mind is thinking that close to God, so the reason you always forgive people is not because it's the right thing to do, but it's because God commanded you. Like he told the leper, go and tell the priest and go do everything Moses said to do. You got it? You obey him. We must wash only our feet which become dirty while walking in this present imperfect world and life. Look at 1 John chapter 1. Amen? 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, He, that's God, is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
How often will he do it? As often as you need it. He said, huh, the disciples asked him, huh, how many times do we forgive? How many times do we forgive those who have harmed us or sinned against us? And Jesus said, 70 times 7, man. What does that mean? That means as many times as you have to. How often is that? All the time. And because that should tell you, if you understand salvation, that should tell you if Jesus, who's the greatest preacher, you know what we tell preachers, right? They tell me that all the time. Uh, you're a little bold and arrogant as a preacher. You, what are you arguing with me about abortion therapy for? You shouldn't be talking politics. You know what? I'm talking real life and reality. I'm talking politics with you, right? If you know salvation, if Jesus is the greatest preacher, he, like they tell me, preacher, practice what you preach. Who's going to practice what they preach more than Jesus? So Jesus tells me to forgive everyone over and over and over as many times as they sin against me. Guess what he's going to do for me? He's going to practice what he preaches. But you don't know that unless you know that. You know how many people don't know that? Jesus practices what he preaches. If he tells you to love your enemies, guess what? When you're not acting right, he still loves you. Man, that's unbelievable. Hang in there with me. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 24. <clears throat> As for you, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. Do you see that? What did you hear? The truth. The truth about what? That if you come to the Father and ask for forgiveness, He will cleanse you, right? When will He cleanse you? Every time you come. What is He going to do? He doesn't have to totally give you a bath. Jesus was the example. All He has to do is wash your what? Feet. 1 John chapter 5. Look at verse 13. In verse 13 it says, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know. Say no. no. So that you may know that you have eternal life. The reason people feel defeated and feel like you can lose your salvation, if you feel that, that worried about what you've done, it's because you are saved. If you don't feel worried about what you're doing, it's because you're not. You could care less what God thinks. And that's why it's important for you to come learn God's word so that way you will know that you're right and know that you're saved and know that he loves you and know that no matter what's going on, he's in it with you. Amen? Amen. You don't have to do the, he loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me. <laughs> the light bills are all Jesus. He loves me, he loves me not. He loves me. Jesus like, really? You're crying over the light bill? Come on, man. You can go in the dark for a little while. I was. I didn't have electricity. I had none of that. Don't be tripping. Don't be tripping. But with what and how do we wash our filthy feet with? With what? And how do we wash our filthy feet? How do we do it? I'm glad you asked. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. So y'all want to know, Jesus said, you don't have to wash your whole body no more, Peter. You just have to wash your stinky what? Okay? Well, how do, uh, what do you mean? How do I do that? What does it mean? So you'll know forever as a Christian, and if you're barely growing in the Lord, this should advance you 10 years in your walk with God. So even if you weren't a Christian 10 years ago, today what you've learned is going to advance you 10 years in your walk with God. Because this is the most important thing between you and God and your relationship with Him, that you always wash your feet. Look at chapter 5 of Ephesians, beginning at verse 25. In verse 25, here's what it says. Husbands, love your wives, just as Jesus Christ also loved the church. And he gave himself up for her. Why? Verse 26. So that he might sanctify her, that Jesus might sanctify her or separate us from. Who? The church. How? Having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word of God. In this world, every step you take is not going to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes on this journey of life as long as you're here. So Jesus says every now and then, your feet will stray off of the path, right? You'll do things you shouldn't do. But because you're a child of God, you need to remember that when you do what it is that you're doing, get back in God's word and cleanse your mind. Wash your feet. You understand? You don't need to wash your whole body. You're already saved. So cleanse your feet 
Wash your feet. Get that what you are thinking over here is okay and it's not. Come straighten it out by looking in God's word and it tells you you shouldn't have done that. You're getting off track. You know what I mean? You're going off the path. You got to always wash your feet continuously. No, this isn't a health 101. This isn't a hygiene class. This is a spiritual lesson. So my question to you today as your pastor is this. Are your feet stinky? <laughs> Do you have filthy stink feet? Don't be looking at your husband's wives. Because some of y'all have that extra long toenail that you don't ever clip either. <laughs> that you never have enough shoe polish. Or not shoe polish. Toenail polish to paint. Because it's so long. It's that one that curls under the little toe. You know what I'm talking about? Anyway. Do you have filthy, stink feet? If you do, then get into and stay in the Word of God that you may be and stay clean. How often? Daily. Psalm chapter 1, in closing. Psalm chapter 1. In Psalm chapter 1, this is how often you must clean your feet. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. How blessed is a man or a woman who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of the sinners. Like, you don't do what the world does, nor sit in the seat of scoffers who make fun of God, and as if God's not looking. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, his word, he meditates how often? Day and night. And he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and out of season. And its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he or she does, he will prosper. Why? Because God is with you in the beginning. He's going to be with you in the what? In the end. You got it? Only if you're in the Word, though, will you remember that and know that. That's why when you get overwhelmed by what's going on, it's because you're not in the Word. To remind yourself that it's okay, God is with you. You got that? So the cursed leper, like sinful humanity, has no options for hope until he or she meets Jesus, the Christ. Jesus is the only one that can heal us. So if you're a true Christian, then you were granted permission by God to come to the Son, Jesus. You believed in the Son of God, Jesus, and repented of your sins in your old life. Upon believing in Jesus, the Son of God, He forgave you of some of your sin. No, of all of your sin. And after Jesus forgave you of all your sin, He caused you to be born again. You didn't become born again on your own. And now Jesus has said that you are clean. Amen? Amen. So guess what? Turn to your neighbor and tell him you're clean. Yeah, you're, clean. Mm -hmm. you're clean. Now let me smell your feet. Ah, no. <laughs> you are clean. If you're struggling in your life, in your marriage, in your personal situations, guess what? You're already completely clean. But what you need to do now is just continuously wash your feet. If you're truly saved, you're always saved. Because you're completely bathed, Jesus said. You're covered and washed by the blood of Jesus Christ that keeps you, how long? Forever. Forever. But you must stay on His path. And the way you stay on path is by doing what? By staying in His Word. His Word is the water that you use to wash your stinky, stank foot or feet, whoever you are. Amen? Or feetses. Or footsies. Okay? Y'all good? Amen. You sure? Amen. Back to Brother Lupe. <laughs> so guess what? Well, we lost connection. Anyway, <laughs> you are all washed up. Okay? All y'all are all washed up. It doesn't matter. You're all washed up. If God says you're all washed up, you're all washed up. Stop doubting it. Stop worrying about it. You are completely clean. You love Jesus Christ, all of you? Amen. Right? Amen? Can you say amen? amen? Right? And you know He's cleansed you, right? Amen. Then just wash your feet. When I see you, don't be... <laughs> oh, brother, you just don't understand. Now, I understand we go through trouble. I understand, right? Trust me, I understand the pressures of life. I'm a Hispanic man that wakes up in a house with an Anglo wife with no tortillas on a weekend. I know the pressures and stress of life. All right. 
I got to sneak out of the house and go to Rita's just to get me noodle. Glory to God. This Jesus, what? What did you do to me, Jesus? That's the thorn in the side. You want me, all of me? You want to know my word? Yes, Lord, yes. Then you'll have to go without tortillas. And you're going to have to go without. Uh, okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> God is good. Let's stand to our feet. <clears throat> Stinky feet, people. That's all it is. Once you're saved, you are always saved. And for those who say that you're not, the reason is because they don't understand the power and the strength of what Jesus has done for them. He has made them completely clean. Amen? Completely clean. You can't call God a liar. If God says he did it, he did it. You know what I mean? He did it, no matter what. Does anybody here have any questions or a prayer request or anything? Anybody? And I know you all need prayer. My sister, I know she, there she comes. Sister Diane too. Brother Juan. Yeah. What's up? I applied for another job, so I mean, I just, my heart stirred just to move on to another job. Job I have is good, but it's just something that I might be better at. It's taxing. Mm-hmm. Well, your wife just looked at you and said, but wait until you get that other one, mijo. Wait until you get because we got some, bit, let me tell you, I got to pay this. I got, <laughs> I got a lot, you know, got laid off. This, a lot of calls, you know, good calls, but just hope that one of them comes through. Keep washing your stinky feet and God will let you walk in the job that he has ready for you with clean feet. Amen. Amen. God will lead and guide your path. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to have a CT scan of the whole body to make sure that the whole cancer is gone. This is from the new doctor to move forward. But I believe in I'm healed, so I have no worries, and God is in control. Amen. That's why I played that song. I needed you to know that he is in control. Amen. Amen. Y'all keep praying for my uncle Raymond Navarro. He's uh, going through some uh, issues, but most of all, pray for his complete cleansing. Amen. Okay. I was gonna say when you're, when you're playing that song, and I just my mind's reflecting on the many people that believe they can get sick from coronavirus. But when when you're playing that song, you mentioned man, God's been in control the whole time. So yeah. There's no reason to live in fear. No reason to live in fear. <laughs> you know what we worry about the most? That if something happens to us. We go the human nature. Who's going to, what about my kids and my wife and stuff? Well, I thought God was still alive. You know what I mean? That's, you, you, you want to know the main reason it's important to have a, a home church and, and, and brothers and sisters in Christ? So that way if something like that does happen, you are there. If something happens to me, y'all are there for my wife and kids. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? If something happens to your husbands, ladies, the, what does the Bible say? Take care of the widows. We're here for you. You know, between all of us, you know, picking up 20 bucks, everybody, Count that with 100 people in the church. You're blessed. You're taken care of. That's the point. The, the government was not created to take care of the church. The church was created to take care of the church. Amen? Amen. That's what we're all about. I'm going to be riding around in no Mercedes Benz. Maybe a Lexus. But man, anyway, anyway, you know what I mean? So let's lift all of them up in prayer, in a general prayer, knowing specifically. Yes. And remember the young man, Julian. Okay? That got shot. Okay? Remember him and lift him up in prayer too. So we have Julian. We have My brother her brother Santana Dominguez. Dominguez. Santana Dominguez. Lift him up in prayer as well. Okay? Mm-hmm. Sister Rosemary and Zaldua. She's still struggling with her. With her cat. Wasn't feeling good. Okay? Your sister as well, V. Keep praying for her sister V. And let's pray for everyone who doesn't know that their feet are cleansed. Mm-hmm. And that their whole body is cleansed. Amen? So in general prayer, but remember to pray for them when you leave here. Father, we pray to you knowing that you are in control, knowing that you are the only one who can make a way where there is no way. And Father, we exalt thee, we exalt you. You are high and lifted up, worthy to be praised. And we love you for everything that you do and even for the things you don't do because you know what's best, Lord God. We lift up the young man and we lift up her brother and we lift up our sisters that are here. We lift up our brother seeking employment somewhere else and and all who are in need, Lord God, right now. You know their hearts and they've been speaking to you day and night, Lord God. But we have sang the song day and night, night and day. Let 
faith arise. Amen? Amen. We will let our faith arise to you, Lord God. We trust you and we know that you are there. And because you have washed us and made us completely clean, we know that we are no longer unclean, Lord God. We thank you for that. We thank you for your love. And we just pray that you would use us, Lord, not only to wash our own feet, but as we'll talk about next week, being humble and being faithful and being loving enough to help others to wash their feet as well. In Jesus' name we pray this morning. Amen, amen, amen. amen. God bless you all. It's good to have a house with everybody in it. Amen? So before you go, let's go ahead and partake of the Lord's Supper. You can remain standing. They're going to bring it to you. It's all right. You can just leave it. And they're going to bring it to you. And if you feel like you need or you've been needing to wash your feet, then, you know, then pray to the Lord right now before you take the Lord's Supper. Let the Lord know what's on your heart. Your prayer to the Lord, because you know God's word, is washing your feet. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> hey, keep uh, Sister Teresa in your prayers. Her pregnancy, <clears throat> it's not her pregnancy, it's God's pregnancy. Amen. God's cradling that baby. Amen. God's going to provide for that baby. Amen. Every family here. Oh, and by the way, congratulations to the other young couple over here who just got a house. We call them Boo Boo. Little, little boo, boo and Julia, they just closed on their new house last week. Amen. Amen. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> Woo. Now we all have an extra place in case your wives kick you out. You know where to go. Brother. <laughs> brother Luca, just one night, bro. Just one night. You're my brother. <laughs> God is good, y'all. Do y'all love each other? Amen. Look around. I love you all. I love you all, man. Like, seriously, I love you all. I wouldn't complain if you showed up at the door, you know? <sighs> Brother Chris, I'm going through something. Oh, well, yeah, what's wrong, man? Come on inside the house. I'd let you in. No matter what time it was, huh? Yeah, it's like, bro, I need a place to stay. Come on, bro. Follow me to the back of the house. I have a lantern. Follow me. No, but, hey, I got to be honest with you. I'd still, I'd still say... My wife is asleep. <laughs> I'll let you in, but she's like, who is it? I don't care what's happening. I need to sleep. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know women, they need their beauty sleep. I'm like, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But when, what, you know, let's go ahead and talk about it. Because we need to repent before we take the Lord's Supper. So let's put it out there. Yeah. But what's the deal? Right? How come when the women are sleeping, we're like, remember brother one? But when, when we're sleeping, like, <laughs> slamming doors, opening drawers. <laughs> what about us? The lights, the lights are on. They open the curtains. You know, I open my eye like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm letting the sun in. Are you going to be in the room? No. Just close the curtain. Get out of here. You ain't going to be in the room. Close the curtain. I don't need no light. Who made you think with my head covered with a blanket that I want more light? Come on. Go on. Go on. God loves you. I love you. And I know you love each other. And just look around at everybody and just tell yourself, these are my brothers and these are my sisters. No matter what's happening, I have you and I'm trusting that you have me. Amen. No matter what. So if you nodded your head, don't be tripping when I show up on a Saturday morning. What y'all got for breakfast, bro? <laughs> Brother Chris again. You know? You know, if I was smart, i hit a different house because we're brothers in Christ. Every morning, you know what I'm talking about? Who makes tortillas, you know what I'm talking about? I don't got no tortillas over here. Where are the ladies that make tortillas at? Lord, we come before you this morning to glorify you. We ask that you bless this that we are about to partake, your body and your blood. Bless us, Lord God. Forgive us of all our sins. And as we've cleansed ourselves this morning with your word, that our feet would be clean and our path would be made straight, Lord God. Your word has lit and is a lamp unto our feet, Lord God. Thank you for giving us an opportunity. You've made it easy. The leper had to go through so many things 
Think about this. I didn't even mention this. The leper had to go through so many things just to prove that he was clean. But look what we mean you got to do. All we got to do is read God's word and obey it. That's so easy. And sometimes we don't even do that. Think of the love and the mercy God has given us, y'all. I don't got to kill a bird, three birds, a turtle dove, and some water, and this and that. Man, his love and his mercy and grace has cleansed us forever, y'all. Man, all you got to do is open his word and thank him. Thank you, Father, for, for healthy births. Thank you, Father, for healthy bodies. Thank you, Father, for sound minds. Thank you, Father, for obedient children. Thank you, Father, for hearts that are willing to forgive and to forgive others, Lord God. And to humble ourselves and to ask for forgiveness. Thank you, God, that just by reading your word that cleanses our feet, Lord God, we can do things the way you created us to do, Lord. And as we partake of your body, we just pray that we would remember, Lord God, that on that day when you were with your disciples, you said, take this bread and break and eat it and do it in remembrance of me laying down my body for you. Amen. Let's do it. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And in the same way, Lord God, we lift up our hand and we just raise this cup to you. And we know and we acknowledge that what you have done, this blood has cleansed us forever. Not just for the week, not just for the night, not just for the weekend, but forever, Lord God. We are so grateful for your tender mercies and your abundant grace in our life. Continue, Lord God, to help us to stay on course, Lord God. May this blood that you shed for us cleanse us and wash us from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. And every time we take of this, we remember that we are completely clean because of your death. In Jesus' name, let's take it. Don't you feel like your Christian walk is real? You know what I mean? For real, amen? We love you, Lord God. Thank you for everything you're doing. I pray that you would just ask God to continue to remind you to come to him. Amen. We love you, Sister Teresa. Amen. God is good. Ladies, love on Sister Teresa. God is good. Thank you all for coming this morning and continue to pray for this body that the Lord will continue to use us in, in, a, in a more powerful way um, this month. We will be fulfilling the contract with uh, the Houston Food Bank in order to get food delivered to us here. And then we will take that food and we will make up time when we can get together as a church on the weekend and go deliver this food. Okay. Unless it needs to be delivered faster because it might spoil or something. I'll run out and go do it, you know. And uh, I'll call some of you and let you know if there are families who need it. And eventually what I'd like to do for everybody is to... To say that those of you who you lead to the Lord and you bring them to Twin City Community Church, that you would continue to reach out to them and give them a call. Let them know you're there for them. If they have any needs or situations, you're there for them. And in the future, wherever you live, if there are people who are barely starting to come who are new, we're going to let you be that point of contact for them. And then they'll contact you and tell you things they need. If they need a, a cow, well, you know, situations that they got, then you guys will call me or one of the deacons, Juan, uh, Little Lucas and Leonard. You'll call them and uh, let them know what's going on and we'll, we'll move forward from there. Okay? And they'll be the ones taking care of everything. We're going we're gonna to help our community, y'all. And we're going to lead as many people as you can to the Lord Jesus Christ before all of this goes in the wrong direction. Amen? Amen. I love you all. God bless you. Say goodbye. Say hello. Huddle. Hug each other, eat more food, whatever. You know what I mean. Amen. <laughs>